Hi, this is Cass from Aussie Cass Plays and welcome to another Sims 4 Speed Build. It's been a while since I posted one of these. L like when I say a while, it's been about two months and I don't exactly know why I haven't done one. Uh, I didn't even realize it had been that long until somebody commented on the last video that I uploaded, which was my tiny cluttered home video. And I looked at the pub posting date of it and was like, whoa. <laughs> so. I don't know. All I can think is it's a combination of I was trying to finish off my Island Dreaming Let's Play to make room for my Realm of Magic Let's Play and then I've been doing my Realm of Magic Let's Play and I'm super super addicted to simultaneously doing my Strangerville uh, it's Let's Play kind of challenge. It's the Strangerville Survival Challenge which I'm kind of doing in a Let's Play-ish kind of style except I'm not actually doing the Strangerville plot at all so yeah, sort of let's play I don't know <laughs> I don't know what you'd call it but anyway I'm having a lot of fun with that and I've been caught up with that plus I also went on holidays at the end or sort of in July and that I think the last video I uploaded was start of August like the last video that came out was start of August so short story is it's been a while uh I haven't even really done many builds in that time I think uh, I've done some renos but that's it so I decided that the empty lot in my in Glimmerbrook in my Realm of Magic Let's Play world needed something on it and I decided to do a library. I know this is the second library I've done now because I did one for Sulani as well. Uh, this is quite different though because this isn't a tiny house reno. This is a bigger building. The lot is frankly probably just as small because all of the Glimmerbrook lots are tiny but I've used a lot of the land. The other thing that I've done that I promised myself in my last uh, speed build video and I promised you guys was that I was going to try and play with different terrain heights on the outside. I don't actually think this was a great choice for that because the lot was so tiny and the house is or the library is so big that there was not a lot of space outside so once I'd raised the terrain and raised the foundation like there's cliffs down the side of the building because I couldn't sort of slope them off gently which is what I would have preferred to do uh, I did go crazy with the plants and stuff later to try and soften that a bit which is why it's so lush on the outside uh, obviously whichever librarian works here is a master of the Flora L'Oreal spell and possibly the Herbio spell I think it's called but I haven't actually unlocked that one yet so I assume it's plant related right it's Herbio uh, anyway so yeah a lot of plants the other thing that's a bit quirky about this library I mean I would call it a magical library except it's one of those magical libraries that's pretending to be a normal library so it's got all your normal library things. There are a few things that your average sim could find in there that you might raise an eyebrow at. Like I put some of the Realm of Magic, um, the kind of dresser looking wall units, the ones that like they, they look like they're holding things. There's the one that's got all the butterflies in it and stuff and they're all out in the public area. So I feel like, that, I mean, that might raise an eyebrow or you might just think that the librarian is interested in collecting butterflies. I mean, I don't know. Uh, there is, however, a hidden spellcaster room, which you'll see I put up on the second floor on the right hand side in that weird room that's got that extra little bit of space in it. Uh, I did that for a couple of reasons. One is because I wanted a secret entrance and I've used the door that is, I, you'll see I put a Realm of Magic door down, but I actually changed it later. So it's the door that's the bookshelf that you get as when you unlock I think in the writer career uh, it's one of the unlocked doors um, I ended up changing it to one of those because I wanted it to be a, a secret like you know on the assumption that the Glimmerbrook wizards and spellcasters and stuff are all trying to keep the whole spellcasting thing on the down low like keep it hidden from the muggles uh, yeah I don't actually know that that's really the case but certainly that's what I've aimed for with this build the other reason I have that weird shaped room is if you have a particularly keen eye when I was first laying out the foundations like the basic shape of the building I think I made the top central bit one square too wide um, I don't know how I spent a while trying to figure out what I'd done because it wasn't even and it was really bothering me 
uh, or it, it looked even, but then on the inside it wasn't even, and I just I couldn't figure it out. Uh, I realized after I'd finished building that that top layer is the top square is just one too wide. I should have brought everything in, but by the time I realized, I'd already finished the build, and I decided, eh, it's a feature, not a bug. I mean, if EA can upload lots with uneven, not quite symmetrical shapes, <laughs> surely I can do it too, because I'm not being paid to. Um, and the other thing that I figured is maybe it's a bit of a tell. So, you know, you come along here with your little muggle to come and do research at the library. You know, you, you're looking for a book on butterflies or something for a project and you hear they've got a really awesome butterfly collection. So you come along to the library and, you know, you're also a bit of a student of architecture and you notice, wow, the, the architecture is a bit off here. You know, the building on the right hand side looks like it's a bit fatter than the side of, you know. You notice it and it could lead to plot. Look at it that way. I am seeding plot into my build. It's not just that I'm slightly incompetent. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, so on the build more specifically, I love the aesthetic of how it turned out. I got to play with some quite heavy wallpapers and things, which I don't normally do. Normally when I do builds, I tend to paint the walls with the aesthetic that matches my taste, which tends to run to, um, you know, like plain, fairly light colors, floor to ceiling paint in the part of like, I live in Canberra in Australia and the houses are all relatively new and we don't have, see a huge amount of wallpaper and we don't see a huge amount of, I don't even know what you call it. The paneling at the bottom of the walls there. Um, I, I don't know what that's called. And, I don't know if I've ever seen a house with that in it. Uh, I've seen obviously like, you know, tiles in bathrooms that go up to, you know, a meter high or whatever, that kind of thing, yeah. But I don't understand what that stuff's called and I don't tend to build with it. But I figured in the same way that when I did the vampire build a little while back, I used the wallpapers, the really heavy wallpapers that came with that because they sort of suited that gothic feel. And I feel like it suits the magical feel of this build to have that kind of thing as well and I really really love that um, there's a few other things that it reminded me of like some of the screenshots that I'll show you guys at the end uh, through the arches are kind of circular in the middle of them and it gave me such hobbit hole vibes I really especially the little room on the top floor uh, the one that's got the green chairs in it. I don't think I've done that yet so spoiler oh no I have there you go <laughs> um, yeah that room it gave me such like a little nook in a hobbit hole kind of vibe. Um, obviously, I don't think you could build a hobbit hole particularly easy, although I'm sure if I went on the gallery, someone's done it because there are some amazing builders out there. I'm like an enthusiastic amateur compared to some people. So I really, really love that. I love the timbers. I timber, like not all timber because that's too much. It's like a 70s sauna or something in eel, but I love timber as highlights against a pale background like that's basically my color palette like that and blue so yeah this this whole library for me was super visually appealing I wish I hadn't messed up the ratio on the outside originally but I may do with it and I, like I said I've turned it into what I'd like to think is a nice little quirk of the build and I'm I have mixed feelings about how I did with the terrain raising it up the way I did like I said, I think I need to try it on a bigger block and see what I can achieve if I pop it, um, like if I can have it ease off more gracefully or play with different terrain heights again, like maybe a third height, maybe have something underneath. I don't know. There's so much potential when you play with the terrain tool, but I don't really even understand it. I actually cut out of this video quite a bit of footage of me just messing around with the train tool trying to even figure out how it worked so if you guys know of an awesome youtube tutorial for how to use that damn terrain tool by all means let me know where to find it or if you've got one because i'm just i'm rubbish at it uh i'm still learning and i don't think i'm doing a very good job like for example the slider one that you could use i don't even know what the tool is called but the slider you can use where you can choose the height you want to raise it to and then it will sort of raise it to that height even just trying to get that right seems super fiddly. I couldn't see a way to like line it up with the terrain that's already there and be like, this is the height. Like you almost need like an eyedropper. Maybe an eyedropper exists. I don't know. If it does, let me know. Anyway, 
<laughs> enough ranting about terrain. I feel like the actual plant part looks pretty cool. Um, I use some debug plants, a lot of non-debug plants. This room that I'm making now is the kids room because I forget, I think I said this with my last library build, libraries have kids rooms, they just do. The, the, play, the play area with the, um, you know, the kids books and the, where they get children's book writers in to come and do readings and they do story time and the parents can go off and do something else, you know, I don't know, pay bills on the computer and the whatever. Um, take advantage of the Wi-Fi, I don't know, get, get on Facebook, whatever it is they do. Um, but the kids can have story time with the librarian. So I put a kid's room in. I ended up, you'll see, I've changed all of the windows to stained glass. I didn't do that originally, but I decided to because... I wanted windows going into the toilets but all of the realm of magic windows were really really long and i felt like you'd be looking someone could look in the window and see the back of your head while you pee i really like that idea so i decided to make them stained glass because then they're not so easy to see through but then it looked really weird just having two stained glass windows out the back and the rest of the building having the nice brown framed sort of windows so i went and did all of them in that color that was the reason why now, I did play test this lot. I tried the all of the bookshelves where I wasn't sure if they'd work. I tried them. I tried the chairs, uh, tested the bathrooms, tested the, like made sure that I hadn't messed up the terrain so you can get to the front door because I was deeply concerned that my sim was just going to be on the street going, <laughs> I don't know, what do you want me to do with this build? Um, but I successfully managed to get into the build, which is quite exciting. I cooked some mac and cheese up in the little cauldron um, that I did actually have to make some changes to after I finished recording this video because the lamps that I put down on the corners of the cauldron uh, was slightly in the way. So I had to nudge them to the side just so that the sim could get to the bookshelf and the cauldron and the chair and everything that's in that room. You'll see I did experiment with whether I could fit that gorgeous fountain somewhere, but because this lot wasn't big enough for me to flatten the hill down and have a flat place at the bottom somewhere I you know, like I tried but I just couldn't do it and because you can't sink terrain items into the ground um, which I gather is because otherwise they're visible if you have a basement they're visible they come through the roof um, which is fair enough but <laughs> because you can't be like I'm gonna embed this pond slightly into the ground because the ground is sloped it, it didn't it just didn't work um, I'm pretty happy with this bit of landscaping that you're looking at right now. I think it's probably my favourite bit. All those different colour daisies and stuff made them bigger and then just, I don't know, I thought it was really pretty and it made me think of spring and it's spring here where I'm recording so I really, really, like, I enjoyed that. Um, there's not a huge amount left to say about the landscaping at this point or anything. I've just, you know, I'm up to the kind of plonking lots of plants downstage. Uh, I did experiment with those hedges, but they did not work. Uh, yeah, so there's some debug stuff. I think I mentioned those ferns are debug um, because I wanted to mix up the plants and there's not a huge amount of plants, especially because I was trying to stick to Realm of Magic and base game when I built this lot. Uh, I say try because when I uploaded it, it turns out I failed and there's also some seasons and I think oh what's it called the one where you go camping in granite falls that pack um yeah there's some of that stuff in there as well which is super annoying because if i'd realized i was building with those two i um, packs somewhere in the build i either would have removed them or i could have gone and had a lot more landscaping options but i put a lot of debug stuff in because i was trying to mix it up like i said i was trying to stick to two packs even though i apparently failed i don't know where uh, if you did spot when I put those items down, you can let me know if you like, but it's all a bit late now, unfortunately. <laughs> so, oops. Ooh, I keep bumping my mic. Sorry, I've got a new microphone and I'm not used to the setup. Anyway, I think I'm going to end this part here or I'm going to end, end this part. It's not a part. I'm going to finish talking at you now uh, so you can watch the rest of this video without me nattering on. I'm almost done anyway, so we're almost up to the screenshots. If you like these kinds of builds, let me know in the comments. I definitely have other ideas for builds I could do. Uh, I, like I said, I'm an enthusiastic amateur on the builds front, uh, but I do enjoy doing them. So if you've got any suggestions of builds you'd like to see, let me know. 
Uh, if you're interested in a zombie survivalist Strangerville let's play, I've got one of those running. I've also got my 100 baby challenge, which is a vampire ch based 100 baby challenge. Uh, I'm up to my second patriarch, but I mean, you could start from the beginning if you wanted, or you could dip in halfway through. I mean, it doesn't really matter. And I'm also doing a Realm of Magic Let's Play, which I will probably visit this library in at some point down the track. So if you've enjoyed, like and subscribe, you know the drill, and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.